Where do you get your protein when you're trying to keep your calories low? Hey, you, how's it going? How are you? It's AD Roundtree. Welcome to this, your Wednesday edition of the show. Yeah, Wednesday. Excellent job, my friend. You are already halfway through yet another week. This is no small accomplishment. You're doing awesome. Hang in there. You got this. You are a badass. And if you need something, if there's anything I can do for you to make your Wednesday better, hit me up. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. At ADSXE. It's where you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At ADSXE. Put it in your phone now in case you need it later. Excuse me. <clears throat> that was the earlier burrito repeating on me a little bit. I got a question from Jason in Cincinnati who said, Hey, AD, I love the podcast. Thank you very much. I used to listen to you in the mornings on the Cincinnati Project. Now I listen to the podcast. The combination of mental health and and health talk is just what I need when I'm in the car to get me ready and motivated for the day. I created a Patreon account just so I could donate. Well, thank you so much. And if you want to kick in, if you want to support the podcast, you can do that at patreon.com slash ADSXE. That's patreon.com slash ADSXE. I'm new to the whole podcasting thing. I'm figuring things out as I go. I knew I didn't want to charge a subscription fee for this podcast or put it behind a paywall because, as Jason said, a lot of these conversations center around mental health. And I believe these conversations should be free and accessible to all in perpetuity, forever, at all times. Um, But if you did want to donate, patreon.com slash ADSXE. Now, is my understanding in the podcast world, if you support a podcast or a creator on Patreon, um, you get something extra. And like I said, I'm figuring this out as I go, but what I think I've figured out is how to let you listen to the podcast commercial free on Patreon. And I'm sure I'll figure out more things as I go. Honestly, it's not... It's not even about the money that people have started donating to the cause. It really... It makes, like I've said, said it over and over again, it makes me feel connected in a way that I didn't fully expect or understand when it happened. It meant a lot more to me than I imagined it would. I only put up a Patreon because people were asking for a way to donate. And, well, I was like, sure, whatever. If it makes you happy, you can, oh, oh, someone, someone cares enough to give me, wow. That's it. It makes me feel connected and cared for in a very special way. If you're doing that, you're awesome. If you're not, if you're just listening, you too are awesome. And if you do want to kick in the way Jason did, patreon.com slash ADSXE. Jason goes on to say, you're like Joe Rogan without the politics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm like Joe Rogan without the tens of millions, do- millions of dollars. <laughs> Uh, I'm like Joe Rogan without the politics or the mixed martial artists or the biggest comedians ever dropping by, but I guess I'll take that as a compliment, sort of a divisive thing to say right now, but whatever the case may be, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad you're into it. I think I'm a long way off from being the next Joe Rogan. And uh, I'm not necessarily sure that's a club I want to be a part of. I'd rather be the first AD in the world of podcasting. And so far, I think there's only one of me. So I guess I'm on the right track. Uh, Jason said, I'm especially into the fitness episodes. As someone who's been in and out of the gym for years, your simple approach and the program you sent me really, really helps. Uh, By the way, Um, I do have a program that I run, and when people first started asking me fitness questions on the podcast, I was like, sure, I'll I'll send it to you if you want. If you're interested, I can send it to you. It's very simple. Just email me. I'm here with you. I'm here for you at gmail.com, and I will pass it along. Jason said, my other question is, where do you get your protein? I'm trying to keep calories to about 1,800 a day to get down to uh, 180 pounds, But getting enough protein without going overboard on the calories is hard. How do you do it? Aha. Okay. So yeah, this is, um, this is actually a question that, well, this is a question that I had when I first started cutting calories. First and foremost, let me preface this again, as I always do when we talk about fitness. I am not a trainer. I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about anything. I only know what worked for me. If you are a trainer, if you are a doctor, there's a very good chance you're listening to these fitness episodes going, no, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. 
if that's the case, tell me so we can talk about that on the air. Uh, so we can share the advice and the love and uh, get everyone to be the ripped, tone, shredded, single digit body fat having super athletes that they want to be by the time summertime rolls around. Um, but yeah, this all started when somebody commented on a before and after picture that I had where I went from being pretty chubby to being slightly ripped, having lost around 50 pounds. They wanted to know how I did it. But I told them how I did it, and man, since then, I get numerous fitness questions every single week. But as I try to get to all of them, Jason, yours is yours is one that I am familiar with because I struggled with the same thing. You're trying to keep calories low. As we've said in the past, when you are trying to get down to a certain weight or when you're trying to get up to a certain weight, if you're trying to gain weight, a decent rule of thumb is to eat about 10 calories per pound of goal body weight a day. Meaning if you want to weigh 180 pounds and you weigh like 200 now, start eating around 1800 calories a day. And that should slowly over time in a gradual way that's easy on your system, get you there. Um, the other sort of rule that we like to adhere to is that if you are trying to build muscle, if you're in the gym lifting weights as part of this stuff, well, you want to make sure you're getting enough protein to support uh, what you're doing. And that means getting about a gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight a day. Meaning if you want to weigh 180 pounds and you're working your way down from 200 and you're in the gym lifting weights, you want to get about 180 grams of protein a day. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to count protein. I don't know if you've gotten my fitness pal out and you're trying to get the protein to add up, but it's not necessarily easy when you are trying to keep your calories lower. So it's a question and it's one that I definitely had, Jason. I have a few protein hacks. Uh, In at number one, zero fat Greek yogurt. Now, uh, if you want to get the fancy stuff, you get Faye or something like that, or you can get the uh, you can get the generic brand at the grocery store. But you're going for Greek yogurt with zero percent fat. I don't know what's in this that makes it taste the way it does. It really is just yogurt with no fat, so it's essentially all carbs and all protein. But you will find that it contains about as much protein as a protein supplement. You can have a couple servings of that, and you can be at 45 to 50 grams of protein awfully quickly. Now, what do you do with said Greek yogurt? Uh, You can do all sorts of things. I've found that if you are trying to get a whole bunch of extra protein, it's great because it's super high in protein, and it's super versatile. Like, Greek yogurt works great savory. You get some of... Uh, If you're a big fan of ranch dip, for example, which I am, um, rather than using sour cream, you get some ranch powder, which has very few calories in it. You sprinkle it in to taste and you eat it with carrot sticks or something like that. And before you know it, you've racked up as much protein as a protein bar. It's really, really good in that respect. Or you can go sweet. You can put fruit or berries in it. Um, You can add sugar-free maple syrup for it. If you're really consciously trying to keep calories low, you can use some sort of sweetener. Uh, There's all sorts of sweeteners out there. There's all sorts of schools of thought about how each one of those sweeteners is good for you. I recommend you do your own, own research on that. Uh, I think a lot of people think that, uh, well, I think there's science out on some artificial sweeteners being carcinogenic and you want to avoid that, but there's some that aren't so bad. Um, I'd like to go with sugar-free maple syrup. And like I said, it works great for savories. It it works great for desserts. It works great if you're eating something like tacos or a taco salad. If you go with Greek yogurt, throw in a little hot sauce, man, that is good eating right there. And it is loaded with protein. I think... I think one serving has about a hundred calories in it. And and that's sort of what two thirds of a cup has like a hundred calories, which is super low. Um, and I think that contains about 18 grams of protein. So you look at your average protein bar has 20 grams of protein is 200 calories. So you're actually better off eating some Greek yogurt than you are eating a a protein bar, which is probably going to cost you way more. 
So Greek yogurt, it can be used in all sorts of things. It can be delicious sweet. It can be delicious savory. It can be used as a sour cream substitute. It can be used as a dip substitute. It's, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's an awesome protein supplement that is reasonably low calorie as you're trying to keep your calories low. Also, I'll point this out before I suggest a protein supplement. Um, when you are just pounding protein supplements, say you get a ready to drink protein drink, um, what you're not getting is the sort of uh, what I think the science and fitness honks call the thermogenic effect of food. Meaning, if you're just taking a protein supplement, Your body doesn't have to do a whole lot of work digesting that. And when you eat something that contains protein, you're actually burning some calories as you digest it and absorb that protein in your system. Uh, Thermogenic, I think, is a fancy way of saying fat burning. So there is a thermogenic effect of foods. The more energy it takes for you to digest it, the more calories you're going to burn after eating that, if that makes sense. So if you just pound a protein drink, then you're not going to get that added benefit. And I don't know why, um, but I think most people think that it's much better as a whole to eat whole foods as opposed to supplements. I know I feel better when I'm doing it. Like if I was just going to live on protein supplements, I'd go out of my freaking mind. But if I have a bowl of carrot sticks and ranch dip made out of Greek yogurt, I am a happy camper. Um, However, as we're talking about protein supplements, there's all kinds of them out there. Um, I find that uh, there's a, what is it? I'm I'm not being paid for any of this, by the way, but um, the Walmart brand Equate Protein Ready to Drink. They come in vanilla, chocolate, I think caramel is the other flavor. Those contain like, I think, hmm, I want to say 130, 160 calories, and they're super high in protein. They've got like 30 grams of protein. So uh, you have two of those throughout the course of the day, boom, uh, without almost any work or without almost any calories, really, um, you are getting 60 grams of protein, and that's really significant. Um, Now, there are people that will tell you you can only absorb a certain amount of protein at any given time. There's other people saying that you can eat all your protein for the day in one meal and it'll be just fine. But uh, when I do have that sort of thing, I like to space it out a little bit. I don't know if the body absorbs it all. I don't know if it's better to space it out, but I tend to not pound protein drinks one after the other. I I just somehow feel that's better. If you're a doctor, a scientist, a trainer, or any of the above, feel free to go ahead and correct me, but I know there's nothing to be lost by spreading them out, so that's what I stick with. Now, the Walmart protein, there's two things that I tell people I do, and they're surprised. I think it's the most obvious thing in the world, but I love cereal. I love a bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. But Cinnamon Toast Crunch with milk, not necessarily all that awesome for you, and you're burning through a whole bunch of calories without getting that sweet, sweet protein that you need to maintain your sweet, sweet muscle gains, yo, as the bros would say. And a bottle of, you know, like one serving of vanilla Walmart protein in a bowl of cereal, that's good eating right there. I really enjoy that, so you might want to give that a go. The chocolate flavor, here, here's what's interesting. The chocolate flavor, if I put that in a mug and I microwave it and I put a squirt of Ready Whip on top, which is a whopping 15 calories, I have a very hard time noticing any real difference between that and a cup of Swiss Miss hot chocolate. It's really not bad. I don't love it cold, but heat it up on a cold day with a little whipped cream on top. That's good eating right there. And like I said, you're getting your 30 grams of protein for about uh, like, hmm, uh, I got to double check, but it's either 130 or 160 calories. So it's a good way of uh, helping to keep your calories low as you get your protein up to that required gram per pound of ideal body weight. Protein bars, um, even the ones that have the least calories have more calories in them than something like that. So I tend to steer clear of those for the most part if I'm trying to save calories for something else. Um, like I think the average, the average protein bar that I do eat when I do eat them is 
uh, I, I think it's like 200 calories with 20 grams of protein in it. And um, at that point, I'd rather just eat a real candy bar um, and get my protein elsewhere. So uh, I tend to steer clear of those, but those are not bad. There's all sorts of powdered protein supplements, and there's all sorts of schools of thought about what is the best type of protein, uh, when it's going to be released into your body. But, you know, I spread it out throughout the course of the day, and I... Uh, I spread it out throughout the course of the day. And I think that as long as you're hitting your protein goals, you're in pretty good shape. Now there's going to be, by the way, this is all just me getting in shape, getting lightly ripped, (laughs) feeling better about myself, waddling and sweating less. There are competition level fitness athletes that would tell you that what I'm doing would not work. And it probably wouldn't work for them because I'm pretty loosey goosey. I'm into you going easy on yourself. I'm into me going easy on myself. I'm into cruising into my fitness goals. I'm into uh, not really paying a whole lot of attention between Thanksgiving and Christmas, giving myself a break and then getting right back on it in the early part of the year. And giving myself a realistic amount of time, January to July, to get into shape. If you take things slow, if you're easy on yourself, if you can manage to be consistent, you don't have to hate life as you get yourself into the shape that you want to be in for the summertime. You can kind of cruise into it and um, you can afford to slip up here and there as long as you get right back on it. So these are not rules for people that are in some kind of serious training. These are not rules for people that want to become ripped, toned, shredded, single digit body fat, super having uh, single digit body fat, having super athletes overnight. These are guidelines that have worked well for me that have helped me go from being uh, kind of hefty and uncomfortable with myself and unhealthy to uh, being in pretty good shape and being able to maintain that pretty much year round. Um, so there you have it. The other things that, um, I think everybody knows about, but I'll say them again, uh, just in case you don't, the other things that are high in protein and lower in calories are things like, well, this is surprising because I think a lot of people think pork and they think bacon. Um, but pork, like a pork loin is surprisingly low in fat which is strange because it seems antithetical to be in pork. And you want to be careful with the cut of pork you're eating or cooking um, and you know make sure as you zap it with your MyFitnessPal app that it is lower in calories. But I think that you'll find most pork, not bacon, I wish, hear me on this one, bacon doesn't fall into this category, but most pork is lower in calories and higher in protein than you would expect. Same goes uh, for the time-honored tradition of eating skinless chicken breast and tuna fish. By the way, skinless chicken breast, which is a little dull, let's you and I be honest. Man, you cut that up, you put it over a salad, you have some of that uh, fat-free Greek yogurt I was talking about, mix that with a little bit of hot sauce. That is some good, satisfying eating right there, my friend. Uh, Another benefit of that Greek yogurt we're talking about, if you are cutting calories um, in an effort to draw on your body's natural reserve of energy, i.e. fat, that spare tire, um, then you are going to experience hunger. And the better job you can do at filling yourself up, uh, the less hungry and uncomfortable you're likely to be. And I find that Greek yogurt tends to hit your stomach if you eat any real quantity of it like a bit of a bowling ball. So you do not suffer from hunger pangs if you make that a protein source. Um, So that works well. So pork, chicken breast, Tuna fish is a really obvious one. A can of tuna contains way more protein than you would think it would for the amount of calories that you're eating. You throw that into a salad, again, with a little Greek yogurt on the side, and you're in good shape. So there you have it. My my go-tos for keeping protein high and calories low would be fat-free Greek yogurt, Walmart brand ready to drink protein, especially heated up as hot chocolate for the chocolate flavor, uh, pork, chicken breast, tuna fish. Anyways, I hope that helps. Hit me up with any more questions. If you have any recipe ideas that you want to share with me or anyone else that listens that are good ways of pounding significant amounts of protein without going over the amount of calories you're trying to get to in a day, hit me up. I would love to know. It's good to switch it up all the time. 
that is it for me. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for being a part of my radio family. As always, this time that you and I spend together, it's the best part of my day every single day. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. Have a great one. Later.